Hello, my name is Rick Saggy Eden, and welcome to Klahawia, a program sponsored by the Vernon Friendship Center located at 2902 29th Avenue. On our program today, we have a very special program. Upon the celebration of the Klahawia 10th anniversary, we have reunited uh, original host Pam Lewis and Terry Harris. And on our program today, we'll be talking a little bit about the history of Klahawia television. And also today, we will be hearing for the first time from Bob Jones with COBJ's update. And Bob's update will be about the Native Summer Theater Program. Also today, we'll be hearing from Bertha Phelan, and she's requested to appear on Klahalia. So we'll be wondering what that program's going to be about. So right now, I'd like to introduce our original host of Klahalia, Pam Lewis. Hi, Rick. Welcome to the program, Pam. Thank you. Pam, uh, I <coughs> wanted to ask you, what was the original idea of uh, the Klahalia television program back in 1977? Um, first of all, that's a long time to remember back. <laughs> I've been trying to think about it for the past uh, couple of days since I've talked to you about this program. Um, when uh, we were first approached by a person that was employed by VERCOM uh, shortly after I was employed by the Friendship Center as public relations person to uh, start looking at a, some type of program that would be uh, based uh, and offered to educate people in regards to Native issues. And uh, the first meeting that I held with him, we discussed uh, how the program should be held. And from there, it was just uh, a matter of being creative with what you wanted to happen with the program, as you know yourself, that you are continually looking for resource people to pull in mm -hmm. and to interview. And back then, I concentrated a lot on educational issues, uh, trying to promote and encourage uh, education with non-Indian people in relation to Native issues. Mm -hmm. And I think it was very successful in, in the early days, too, that um, we did cover a lot of broad po uh, subjects like politics, uh, cultural uh, things. Um, I know now that you travel a lot with your crew and stuff, and that's really good. That's really good to see that it's, it's come to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, development that had to be done during the early days, like uh, there was uh, a lot of planning that went into it. Uh, we tried to get as many resource people as we could uh, on the program throughout the year. Mm -hmm. When you mean resource people, like, are you talking into um, counselors? Uh, what kind of resource people are you talking about? Well, we had, uh, for instance, politicians. We had uh, several of the politicians, unlike we had uh, uh, Bill Wilson from UNN. Uh, who was the president back then, and he spoke on Indian politics, mm -hmm. primarily what was happening with off-reserve people. Uh, we had elders like Josephine Gregory, who I'm sure that you've had on as mm -hmm. a resource person since then, and she is very talented and skilled in, in uh, the cultural side uh, of Native people's lives. Uh, we had uh, several other people that just uh, had skills or that were providing, willing to share a knowledge with mm -hmm. people in regards to what they were doing in their lives. And basically, it also showed, I believe it showed a lot of people that Indian people uh, in general were just the same as everyone else. And to me, that was really important that people realize that we're not um, the stereotype that is so evident in society. That's right. Pam, who were some of the people that took part and assisted you in producing Klahalia Television? In remembering back, the ones that I can uh, think of is Brian Lewis. Uh, he was a camera person, and Susan Buckman was a camera person. Uh, I often think about Susan because I haven't seen her for years. But uh, they came in and were trained by the person that was uh, employed by VERCOM back then. And they served uh, very well as camera people. Mm -hmm. Well, Pam. I'm going to take the time right now to bring in Terry Harris. You're going to come back on along with Terry and myself and talk a little bit more about Klahalia Television. Sure. Okay. We'll Thanks, be, Rick. We'll be right back. You took over after Pam Lewis left and went on to her job. Um, what were your in objectives with, with the Klahalia Television program? Well, I knew that the, um, the local Indians as well as the Indians across Canada had some very important information for everybody in general, not just Indians, but the average person on the street, and that's the uh, the kind of thing that I wanted most to promote, mm -hmm. particularly the elders. 
I see. Now, what was the exact year that you took over from Pam Lewis? Ah, uh, the exact year. Probably 1979. That sounds about right. Long time ago. And what, how did you get into hosting and producing Klaue? I had done a, a program before. I worked for an Indian organization that uh, we had a cable program. So I was a little bit used to that. Mm -hmm. And Pam mentioned promoting native issues, uh, community resource people. Did you try to maintain that same type of format? Very much, mm -hmm. very much. I, th I think that's one of the most valuable things that the program has to offer is access to the Indian population here. Mm -hmm. Now, did you make any changes or did you add any, any new part features in Uncle Haya? Did, can you, was there anything uh, that you can remember back then that you thought was st stood out in your mind the most? <laughs> well, uh, we started doing a few more road shows then. And um, of course, there was my sparkling personality that <laughs> helped an awful lot. Uh, uh, I, 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 I can't say that. Um, it was, it was terribly improved. It was more of the same, actually. I was really glad to carry on the tradition that had been begun. Mm -hmm. uh, personal question. What, how do you feel Kalhari Television? What kind of motivation did it have to do with your personal growth? Um, I really saw that it was something that I, could, that I enjoyed doing and that I wanted to do more of. In fact, I'm waiting now on an interview from the Chief Dan George Memorial Society on their uh, video production training that's coming up this fall mm -hmm. that I feel pretty good about getting into. And, uh, it definitely uh, contributed to my career direction in the media, the electronic media. After hosting and producing Kalhalia back in 79 to about 81, 82, you, you, you went on to do some of your own goals and went on to do some traveling. But you always come back here to Vernon, and every time you have come back, you always have taken an interest in how the production is doing. Mm -hmm. And um, you've been involved with a few training programs with the Friendship Center. But there was a, a video production training mm -hmm. program at the center for about, uh, I think it was 10 months. So you've also not only got into the front of the camera, but also learned the techniques behind mm -hmm. the scenes. And yeah, the technical aspect I find is uh, even more fun than being in front of the camera, mm -hmm. sometimes. Right. Uh, you never did answer what some one of the most, the show that really stuck, stood in your mind that you've done in the last, the last 79 to 81 Oh, years. boy, the show that sticks out most in my mind. Um, that is a tough one. There were lots of uh, exciting uh, experiences. Probably the most uh, interesting one was uh, when I was interviewing um, some hotshot leader from Alberta, I forget his name, but was outside. And uh, as we were going halfway through the uh, interview, I realized that there was a bug crawling up my leg. <laughs> and uh, it was hard to maintain a very straight face and ask intelligent questions while I was sweating this bug, too. Eh? So that, was, mm -hmm. that comes to mind right away. Great. Terry, um, we're going to come back with Pam and we're going to do some more reminiscing about Klahalia's history. Mm -hmm. Will you stick around? Great, I will. Okay. We'll be back with Pam Lewis and Terry Harris together. Pam, how did Terry Harris ever manage to take Klahalia television away from you? He, uh, well, towards the end of my second year of doing the show, um, the funding for my position was running out. It was on a grant, and we had applied for more funding, and I would have had a three-month layoff. And I was offered another job with a uh, BC organization, mm -hmm. and I decided at that time to take that job. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so the funding did come through, and as a result, the Friendship Center board decided to advertise. Uh, Terry applied, and I would imagine was uh, known to the <laughs> director and the other staff members at the Friendship Center and uh, did his usual buttering up and yeah. then he got the job. Yeah, yeah you met, uh, what's this buttering up, Terry? Is this the truth? Did you, did you come in there and butter up everybody <laughs> to get taken? All over? I know is I have a great resume, you see. That <laughs> 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 no, was more of a lateral pass, eh, Pam? Mm -hmm. I guess he had the skills, mm -hmm. a lot of the skills to do it. When I started out, it was starting out cold. I had public speaking behind me and some of the training that I had um, acquired and through the Friendship Center again. Um, myself, personally, I really credit a lot to the Friendship Center here in Vernon for my personal development as well as uh, career development. It was a start for me as a, as a person, uh, also as a woman, and stepping out and, and taking uh, those steps in my life to start getting into uh, working and becoming a working woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Friendship Center helped me do that. And I really uh, 
give a lot of credit to the board members back then and to the director, Bertha. Bertha was an excellent director to work for. Mm -hmm. I'd like to put in with that, too, that the Friendship Center really assisted me and developed me uh, and uh, propelled me in the direction I'm going now, and that uh, it's been because of a, a good board and uh, Bertha Phelan. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about, you went on to work for the BC Association. You meant BC Association of Friendship Centers? Uh, no, it wasn't. No? It was a political organization. A political organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about the present right now, Pam. What, what are you presently doing? Uh, right now I'm working for the Spal Machine Union Band as a program coordinator counselor. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically what I do is coordinate a program uh, for an alcohol and drug recovery home mm -hmm. for people that are either on their way to alcohol and drug treatment or coming back from alcohol and drug treatment. Mm -hmm. And Terry, you mentioned that you were in the process of applying or trying to get into a school. Well, I've already had the interview, actually, and they're deciding at this point. But uh, <clears throat> it's the uh, Chief Dan George Memorial Foundation it has a 10-month training on video, video and film production, which is uh, pretty exciting. They have some really hot shot uh, producers that are going to be giving workshops there. And uh, it's a really great opportunity they'd like to uh, participate in in Vancouver, by the way. Mm -hmm. Pam, have you been involved with any other type of television programs since Clahalia? No, I haven't. Not at all. It you seems like it? I had it a one-shot, two-year thing, and then it was it was gone. Mm -hmm. well, I wanted to ask you do, you, do you miss appearing on television, being involved with the media, TV? No, I don't. <laughs> I really no, don't. <laughs> so I guess you're, you're not interested in guest hosting if you have the program. <laughs> Well, I haven't really given it that much thought, mm -hmm. but uh, if approached, I'm approachable. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to catch you off guard here on air or anything like that, mm -hmm. but you know, it is important to have the women's side of the Klahalia, and I, I find it to have that women guest, to have issues that pertaining women. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, myself, I, I do an interview with, uh, with women issues, but I'm not up to date. And they always think I'm controversial regarding women's issues, so you know, we let women issues, uh, we let women handle their women's issues. Mm -hmm. How about you, Terry? Uh, interested in uh, taking part, uh, getting involved? I know if you are accepted in that school, we're not going to be able to. Uh, uh, but we, like we met, like you mentioned, Pam, we do a lot of traveling, and you know, Vancouver is hopefully not going to be too far away. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd love to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really enjoy uh, studio work. One of the um, credit has to be from the base out of the Kalahari television program over the years of evolutioning. Uh, uh, all these people that has been training behind the scenes working on cameras. In the last few years, we've been able to offer more, give more information, more training, on-hands training. And a lot, a lot of the people that's come out of the Kalahari televisions have gone on to like, do more training or gone on to uh, career in communications. Uh, I think that uh, they deserve a lot of credit too, mm -hmm. the people that's done the behind the scenes. And of course, not to mention Vercom, mm -hmm. who Cable, who over the years mm -hmm. has put up with uh, Klahalia Television and hopefully that we've made a lot of people aware about Native issues in the community and hopefully we could assist Vercom in their community awareness programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Pam, I want to, okay, you are involved with the Enderby Band. You're still a member of the you're a member of the Okanagan Indian yes, Band, I am. and uh, just getting back on some of the issues that uh, what would you like to see Klahalia Television do in the next say next couple of years regarding some of the issues that you'd like to see Native programs do? I'd have to give that some thought, Rick. It's uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things happening, um, like where I'm at right now in, in the job that I'm at. Um, what I did was, uh, in working for the Friendship Center and then going and working in the province of BC, like traveling a lot and seeing a lot of Indian people and getting to know a lot of Indian people in this province, one of the things that uh, I recognized in working in especially economic development program delivery uh, in a socioeconomic space for people is that uh, it's kind of pointless in delivering a lot of uh, programs to people uh, when they don't have um, the uh, holistic approach to health in their lives. And that was why I chose to go into a different area of work. Uh, working where I am now, I work with rehabilitating people so that they have a healthy lifestyle and promoting that. 
And one of the things that I recognize in people and communities and within ourselves is that, is that if you have a healthy, holistic approach to living, you also have that to being, becoming economically well in, in society today. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, that's the type of thing that I would like to see really promoted uh, in videos in uh, just in general in the communities and you can see uh, if you did a if you did took a really good look at the communities and where they're at right now our communities you would see that there is a wellness uh, approach to what is happening within our communities with our children uh, with the pro types of programs that are being offered uh, you know, self-determination and uh, uh, becoming economically viable and independent has been talked about for years and that's coming about, but it's coming about also in line with the things that are necessary to, ha to maintain a healthy lifestyle in our communities. And it's starting through our children. Mm -hmm. And those types of things are important. And so I think if we start moving that way with uh, promoting and encouraging um, educational things, like that, it would be really good. Mm -hmm. and we'll certainly hope to meet those needs, and this is what the television program is all about, is to be able to assist groups that need to get a, a message across to other Native people, at urban Natives, who are able to watch our television program. And uh, Terry, on a, just an opinion or a, just a, an evaluation of how do you, how have you seen, like since 79, you've been involved in working with Native people, of course, for a long time. W how do you feel Native people in relation to communications? How are they doing right now at present, 1987? I think there's um, a whole lot of potential that hasn't been realized just yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I know there have been a, a lot of people, a lot of Native people working on video in various different ways, just out of their own backyard or out of their closet kind of a thing. And uh, with some of the training opportunities that are available, I think in the next two years we'll see a, a real uh, public notice of some great Indian talent has been here all along, but just finally getting a break, a chance to uh, be exposed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's pretty exciting. I feel really strong about uh, mm -hmm. what's happening with the media these days. Since 1977, Pam, I guess you've seen uh, the Native people, uh, different uh, programs develop and some go and some are still here. Now, um, getting back to the social programs, uh, do you feel that um, Friendship centers, uh, band, band's offices, are, do you think they're doing more program that is to assist the people involved with their organization? Doing mm. more for the people? Yes, I, I feel so. I feel, I feel that. Uh, but I also uh, feel that the focus has changed a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I haven't been in touch with the Friendship Center movement for a few years, mm -hmm. like, um, so I don't really know what their mandate, if it's changed any or if they're... Uh, focusing entirely in one area or not. I believe that the services that they provide through referral and the programs that they offer are of vital interest. It was really good. I was really glad to see that the uh, program director at the Friendship Center has promoted and encouraged support groups. Support groups are very necessary to everyone, not only our people, but to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a real movement in that area for people to really start uh, wanting to be well and to be uh, liking themselves and that makes a lot of difference and I those types of programs uh, show me that there is a shift in the focus mm -hmm. within the friendship centers uh, with the bands um, there seems to be a, a real movement towards that in a lot of communities uh, one of the things that I think uh, people are going to see is a great amount of change in the uh, attitude of leaders probably not only in this province but across Canada in regards to to what they're looking at in the future. And it's going to once again come to our children because I think our children have a really good, uh, good, good, are equipped with all of the tools that they'll need to be successful in the future. Mm -hmm. Of course, today we're celebrating Kahalia Television's 10th anniversary and uh, right after we do this program, we're gonna go over to the Friendship Center where we'll have an open house and hopefully that we can watch some of the old videos that some of the programs that you did, Terry, that we've got up, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pam, at that time, there was no real documentation of any early Kahalia years. 
No, there wasn't. I think uh, if everybody can think back and, and yes. look back where Vercom was back, then they were in a, another building. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, what was happening with our tapes, that we were reusing them. That's right. And so there, was, there wasn't a lot of record. I, I know that we had photographs. Photographs. That's, about it, that's know, right. That and we, we do have those photographs available for our, we're using that our historic background. I think the Friendship Center was in another building in those days, too, right? Well, I think actually we went through... Th Two or three buildings before we ah. got to the one where we're at. Two or three buildings. Yeah. Well, I really want to take the time to thank you very much for you know it's really nice to have like uh, I'm the third host in Kalahalia and then you're the first and you're the second and I think this is an, uh, an, to me it's an emotional moment to have both of you on Kalahalia and and without both of you being where you are back in '77 and '79, I really take pride on Kalahalia Television for their accomplishments and I. I want to thank you for, for your efforts on uh, the TV program. Oh, you're most welcome, Rick. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Okay, now it's time to bring on what you've been waiting for all this time is COBJ's first update with Bob Jones. Challenge 87 is a student youth uh, summer program, and in conjunction with the Friendship Center and Spirit Song from Vancouver, we were able to conduct a intensive 10-week uh, native drama program this, this past summer, ending in September of, uh, of this year. I'd like to tell you a little bit about that program because it was very exciting, it really was. Um, uh, several students were interviewed and selected, uh, four females and four males, all young people between the ages of, I believe, uh, uh, 16 and, and 20. And uh, it was a 10 week program, five days a week, in, in which they, they learned the techniques of, of, of drama, of acting. And it was quite interesting because a lot of people always think that when you start to learn dr uh, drama, that you just learn to become an actor. And uh, the students found out just how difficult it was and how much fun it was and how creative it was learning about themselves and, and their inner feelings and, and how to project, how to create masks. Um, uh, the insight into uh, the Ogallagan legends. And uh, at the end of this course, which was um, uh, on September the 4th, uh, they had the showcase at the Anglican Church. And there was about 100 people or so there. It was a very successful play. It was entitled The Great Spirit Names the Animal People in Ogallagan Lang um, Legends. And let me explain this for a minute. Uh, the Great Spirit Names the Animal People is an Ogallagan legend adapted to a native culture story theater presentation. Theater, native culture story theater developed by Spirit Song, Native Indian Theater Company in Vancouver, employs native legends as a vehicle to present in a theatrical art form, the language, history, customs, and beliefs in Indian people. And I would like to note that uh, this was the first time that uh, this type of uh, program for native youth has been presented outside of the Vancouver area. And it was truly successful. And uh, a lot of people really, really enjoyed it. Here's Rick. You just heard from Bob Jones with COBJ's Update. And you will be hearing more from Bob Jones and in the future. Now it's time to introduce Bertha Phelan, Executive Director of the Vernon Friendship Center. Thank you, Rick. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you three, Terry, Pam, and yourself, Rick, for making these last 10 years so successful. To a large extent, you were Klahauya. There has only been the three of you in the last 10 years. And um, without you three, the, the communications program wouldn't have been as successful as it was. So the success of our communications program is due to the largest part to you three. We also need to thank Jamie Patterson and Vercom for giving us the opportunity to have the cable show for the last 10 years. So I, I would like to publicly thank Jamie and Vercom. And um, in commemoration of this, these past 10 years, I have a plaque that I would like to present to you three to hang in your studio at the Friendship Center. Um, on behalf of myself and the board, we would like to present this plaque to you. Um, I'll read it if you like. Klahalia Television, 1977 to 1987. 
proudly celebrates 10 years service to the Vernon urban native community. Through the use of this medium, we inform native people, create cultural awareness, and bridge the gap between the native and non-native community. So Rick, I would like to, to present it to you and uh, let you put it up in your studio. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Terry. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Oops. <laughs> and I know that we'll, uh, we've only just begun. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in 10 more years. And I hope that we'll have all three of you still in the organization. Maybe by then we'll have enough funding to get you all back and we'll have you all with us <laughs> hey, again. Yeah, that would be good. That's right, uh, 1997, here yeah. we come. So on behalf of everybody, thank you for watching Klahalia. Good night, everybody.